Western Digital Black SN850. We're going to accomplish four things with this video. Number one, we're going to do an unboxing. Number two, we're going to talk about the technology because that's very, very important about where this all lays out. Number three, we're going to do a test, so we'll break for the test so you don't have to watch all that how it goes. And number four, we're going to do an install. Have to do the install before we can do the test. So first thing, let's cut to the overhead camera and let's uh, do an unboxing. Stay with us. Now this came in a flat pack, so this is not a big deal to unbox it, but I'm going to open this. Only place I can find that had this particular drive was at Newegg. And uh, fortunately, I was able to get my hands on this. Now, I want to preface this first of all as I open this. This is the second drive of this type, and there are going to be, you can put a piece of something around it. Huh. Hello Fresh. Yep. That's New Egg, all right. Anyway, there we are. Wow, we finally got our hands on one of these. Now, this is the second drive in the series. Uh, in the series, meaning second generation. The first drive was the Samsung 980 Pro. We did a test on that, did a video on that. We compared that to a lot of other drives. And uh, as we get into the technology, the third drive will probably be out by the time you see this, and that is the third drive is going to be the two terabyte drive, and that's going to be from Sabrent. So that should be out by the time you see this. All three of these drives are second generation PCI Express 4.0. So as we get this out, we take a look at this. We know we have an NVMe drive. Now, what is an NVMe drive? I can tell you the acronym, you won't know anything more. Just say this is the fastest storage device you can put in a computer. And not all computers can handle it. Most can. We're going to do this on a test on a Gigabyte TRX40 designated motherboard. So I'm going to put my gloves on. I'm going to suit up here in a couple of minutes. But I want to show you some technology. And we're going to relate this technology on this particular device to that particular motherboard as we look at the chipset. So when you try to say, where do I install this? you'll have some idea of where and why. Because I believe Lee was the first one that asked the question uh, with the Samsung, what's the fastest of the four connectors on the motherboard? Well, we're going to go a step further. Now right now, this is in a one terabyte, and it says it specs out at 7,000. The next drive coming out, which is the Sabre, it said it specs out at 7,100. So that's 7,000 megabytes per second. When we tested the Samsung, it too is supposed to have the same controller, and it too said the same spec, because I believe since it uses the same controller, we have the same results. Now, this uh, Sabrent drive that's coming out that says it's 7100, right now we've seen 6700 with a 6700 megabytes transfer rate on the uh, Samsung 980 Pro. What kind of speed can we expect on the Western Digital? My expectation to be the same. But instead of having two places on the motherboard, we've really got three locations we can look at. And uh, the reason I say that, well, Let's take a look at the PDF manual and I'll show you what I'm talking about. And this is for the Gigabyte TRX40 Designator Motherboard. Now you'll notice we have two sockets and I'll point to them. Right now the first two M.2 sockets. That's where you would put an NVMe drive. Now, after we've looked at the block diagram, we'll then take a look at the motherboard layout also in the manual. They're right next to each other because I want you to see how the wiring is set up for this because it matters for speed transfer. And then we'll look at where the actual physical connection lies and why this is relevant and important. Because we're looking at PCI Express 4.0, this is a PCI Express 4.0 drive. That's a PCI Express 4.0 motherboard. Why is that relevant? There's only two chipsets right now. Hopefully there'll be more in the future. The X570, which you can put one of these in, or in the TRX40 designator. Now, the reason for that distinction is because the TRX40 on the designator has an I.O. card that we can put four of these drives in. The question then becomes, which connector is faster on the motherboard? The two that go to the chipset, the two that go to the processor, which of course it is, or in one of the slots that's wired to the processor. So let's take a look at that as we work through this. So again, the first two connectors are strictly to the CPU. The second two connectors on the motherboard, which are right here, they are tied to the chipset and through the PCI bus to the CPU. But the other connector we have, if you'll notice, we have two 16-lane slots. If we use the second PCI Express by 16 slot, and you have to remember, even though the slots mechanically are by 16, we only have two 16 slots electrically and two 8-lane slots electrically. They are all mechanically the same, but they are not all electrically the same. So I want to point out that distinction. I think sometimes people get confused on their resources. And uh, what the chipset can do, how it's implemented, you have to look at the manual. So when you guys ask me a question, I check the manual because even though there's a standard you, of expectations that you think you're going to see, you'll find one motherboard that kind of blows that out of the water and doesn't have two and two. It might have three and one. Uh, 
it's the same amount of resources. It just depends on how the manufacturer has allocated those resources. So I take a look at that. I find it's curious. Uh, this is what we have to use for an example where we will maximize PCI Express resources. So that's what we're looking at. Hope that helps. So as we look through this, of the three places, now let's check out the motherboard. Now the first two connectors right here is number one, which is M2M, M2Q. Then we have number three, M2P, and over here, M2C. These first two go to the CPU. The second two down here go through the chipset. So they're a little bit slower, but not as slow as we thought they'd be. We have, if you'll notice here, a PCI Express with 16 number one and a PCI Express with 16 number two. Those are the two 16 lane slots. Right here is PCI Express by 8 number 1, and at the bottom, PCI Express by 8 number 2. Since we have two 16-lane slots and two 8-lane slots, the first 16-lane slot would have a video card. So any one of your RTX cards. Now, if you have an RTX, say, 3090, and it happens to be an EVGA and it takes up three slots, then all you have left is this second 16-lane slot. It would totally cover that 8-lane slot. So that 8-lane slot, we need access to the second 8-lane slot, or else... We can't do Thunderbolt until we know we have that. So that's something we're looking into. We're going to try. And when we do it, we'll do the BIOS. We'll let you know how that works out. But it's important to keep all this in your mind while you're working through this. So let's get back to the uh, NVMe drive. So our two fastest connections are 1 and 2 right here. And our second two down here are 3 and 4. The question is, how does that speed differentiate and matter when we go to maybe this second 16-lane slot? Because that also, like the first two M.2 connectors, those four connectors that could be put on that card are tied directly to the CPU. I don't know, but that's what we're going to test this drive on. Now, I'm not going to go back and test the other drives. We're only going to test this one drive. We're going to put it in the secondary connector. We will try it in one of the um, other connectors for the chipset. We have an expectation of what it'll be. But then we're going to take the NVMe quad card as a generic name. We'll take the, uh, the uh, Gigabyte quad card, put this drive on it, test and see how it compares. I expect, based on the technology, uh, it should perform the same as on the chipset, since it is the chipset. But anything that has to go through the bus, in other words, anything that's plugged into the bus, there's a, there's a delay performance. That's what it's been in the past. So I don't expect it per to perform, even though it's tied directly to the CPU, as the other one. But I'm curious, and I want to find out, and since Lee asked the question, if I don't test it, he'll mention it, so... I want to be one step ahead of the curve. So let's find out. So all we have here is a drive. We need to get it out. I've got to get the machine set up here on the table. And now once I get the lid off of it, I'll put it in and we're going to test it. So we've done the unboxing. Two, we've talked about the technology. Three, I've got to do the test. And uh, I've got to install it first. I don't think you guys want to watch me install this drive. So I'm going to cut. And the next time you see this, I should have some results on how this thing sets up. So hope you'll stay with us and part two coming up. Okay, now we've got the next step. We've got the system up on the table. I've still got the drive in the box. So I'm going to do overhead. I will slice it open so you guys get to see it. And wow, this looks like it's already been opened before. That seal is not sealed. Wow, I'm just now seeing that. I hope it's brand new. Should be. I hope it just didn't stick down good enough. Wow. Okay, first things first. I got my gloves on. I guess I feel like Mickey Mouse, but got to be grounded. I'm looking at the drive because we're going to do unboxing, slice the seal. And it looks like the seal has uh, already been opened or else it didn't stick down good. That's a little bit disconcerting. Let's take a look so you can see what we see. Okay, here's the drive. We got a seal on the bottom. That's sealed good. But on top, we don't have a good seal. That is not sealed. So I don't know if that was compromised or if they just didn't do a good job during manufacture putting that lid down. So what I'm going to do, I'll gingerly open this. And let's see what we've got. It's brand spanking new, so there's not been time for anybody else to monkey with it. But I don't, uh, I don't care for that. Not a lot of confidence. So I'll go ahead and just fold it down, pull that box open, so you guys can see it come out of the box as we do. It's brand spanking new. i got to tell you, that's one thing I don't care of, the way most companies are packaging their drives. There's just not much of a package there which to me is a little bit disconcerting. So there's the box, the little black box. And I've got a manual here that came with it. That's got a piece of tape on it, Western Digital. They always include that with whatever drive they have. And here's the, uh, the drive itself. I think what we need to do is, um, I gotta take pause for just a moment as I look at this. 
and uh, I'll do an overhead and show you this while I talk. I think what we're going to need to do is talk some more about NVMe drives, not only just the technology, but like where do you get the extra screws? I can put up a link on that. I've also found a link where you can get the specific screws to go to this specific motherboard where the screws are stacked. And uh, I stumbled into it. I didn't go looking for it. I just stumbled into it. But I think we need to get more into this on these details on the size, the capacity, the speed issues we get into. But anyway, I want you to see this drive. Here it is. What I need to do now is I'm going to take, first of all, the Thunderbolt card has got to come out. I'll lay it aside. Video card, um, I think I can do it with just Thunderbolt. I'll take that out and that little device right there, that slot, you can see where my fingers outline the area. So that's where we're going to end up putting this drive on that connector. We're going to test it here. We're going to take up this connector. I'll test it on one of these. And then we will take this 16 lane slot, put the card in and test this drive in that slot. I don't think there's a need to test it in all four of the connectors. I will test it in the first one and we'll see what kind of performance we get. But if the test looks odd or not what I would expect, then I will go down the line and test all four. It's easier to do it while I'm here. So uh, one here one here, and then either one or four right here. That'll be the next step. So I'm grounded. I'll set that aside. Thunderbolt's coming out. Next video you're going to see should probably be the uh, test results. No need to watch me put in the different connectors. So stay with us. Okay, first things first. We've got the computer set up. I went ahead and pulled off my strap while I'm moving around with the keyboard. It's a little easier. Still got my gloves on. I want to show you an overhead shot because we've got the uh, Western Digital Black SN850 installed and it's on the second connector which means it's tied to the uh, CPU and I'll show you where that's at. So if you'll notice right here where that shiny screw is, I'm pointing my two fingers. It's right under that connector. And yes, I installed the Thunderbolt 3 card again. What we want to do now is we're going to go into Windows since this is a new drive. It has to be initialized. First initialized, then formatted, give it a drive letter, those three things, so that we can see it. And instead of telling you to go look at another video, I'm going to show you. Uh, never take anything for granted. For those that are new with this, I hope this helps. Stick with us. Okay, so we need to go to Control Panel. Then we'll go to Administrative Tools. Then we will go to Computer Management. Then we will select Disk Management. And a dialog box should pop up, and it did. Right there, Disk Number 2, and it says MBR. That's the default. We don't want MBR, we want GPT. Why is that? GPT is the new way of addressing large disks, large format disks going forward. MBR was the old way. I won't get any more into the details because even explaining those acronyms just, I think, gets more confusing. By default, if you've got a 2.5 terabyte or larger drive, it will select GPT. If you've got 2.5 terabytes or less, it selects MBR. It's just the way things are set up because it's part of the process with the uh, technology as it's moved forward. So even though this is a one terabyte, everything moving forward, everything should be set as GPT, even though this wants to default to MBR. So I just want to share that with you and I want to show that because uh, we get to do this one time the first time. There's no do over with this. Once a drive is initialized, we can go back and reformat as many times as we want. Uh, but the initialization occurs with the first time. And the second thing we do as part of this process is to format the drive. We do a quick format. That's pretty quick and easy. Then the third thing we do is we want to give it a drive letter. And either a drive letter or a volume letter, then we will be able to use the test software and uh, tell us what this thing can do. So let's step through this real quick. Doesn't take but a second, but I want to show you and tell you what's going on. Okay, so at this step, step one, we've changed to GPT. We're going to say OK. Then the next step is going to pop up. We'll go down to that disk. and now says it's unallocated. So we're going to right click, we'll select new simple volume, we get a wizard and it's going to step us through the process. So we're going to go welcome wizard to the new simple volume. We're going to select the largest size which is the default. We're going to assign a drive letter for D, it's alright, that can be changed later. We're going to use NTFS, the allocation units, we're going to go with the default. Allocation unit sizes are important especially with RAID volumes. But for the purpose of this test, we're going to go with the default. We'll leave the volume new volume. Now, when I set a drive, I always put a volume label on it. And I usually identify a drive according to either the manufacturer and the technology and the date or something that's specific to that drive. To me, that's relevant like a drive that stays in a machine for like virtual instruments or a drive that stays in a machine for uh, 
say, a, a working drive or a drive that is used for storage drive that will be accessed and be pulled out. Everything you do with NVMe is usually internal, but NVMe can be used as a removable drive. ICDoc has a device that does that. We may talk some more about that at some point. Uh, the question came up about RAID cards, and uh, that's why I mention it now. So as these questions come up, we'll do a video on it if you guys want to know how to do that stuff. We may not actually show you the product, but we'll show you how the technology works. So I wanted to show you this so you understand the process and where my head's at. I hope this helps so when you get ready to do yours, you won't be confused by the process. Everything here is good. We're going to do a quick format. If you use just a regular format, it's going to take a while. Quick format's fine. So we're going to do next. Now this will run its thing, do its course. We're going to say finish. This, this outlines everything that's getting ready to happen. And that volume pops up and there it is. It's ready. Now what's important to know is this volume D. Because volume D is the drive letter we're going to run the test on. So I'm going to close everything down. Go to the application, run the test only on volume D, and then on this connector, then go through the process again on the next connector and the next connector. But I wanted to show you this process so that way you guys understand what's going on. And who knows, if, uh, if the question comes up again about where to get the screws, we might even do a video about, uh, about those screws because it's kind of a big deal. We've shown in the past how to look at that with a camera and get that uh, endoscopic camera right on those screws. That's how I figured out they were stacked using that camera. Uh, but uh, another video, another time. Let's test. We'll close everything down. Again, volume D. Using crystal disk mark, we're going to go to volume D. And we're going to run that test. And we're going to say all. And let it do its thing. Now remember, our target is 7,000. What we achieved with the Samsung 980 Pro was 6,700. Wow. I'm impressed. So right now we have a read of 7,070 megabytes. Let's see what we get on a write. And again, this is not scientific. This is all default. And I'm not going to switch the camera so you, for you to see me while I'm talking. I want you to see this. I had not planned on doing this in real time, but now that I see the results we're getting, I think that is absolutely fascinating. So which drive is the better drive? Well, right now I would look at bang for the buck, which one is the best price? whether you get the Samsung 980 Pro, which is what I would have said, or whether you get the Western Digital Black SN850. Based on the numbers I'm seeing right now, I would say the Western Digital Black SN850. Now remember, this is PCI Express 4. It's second generation. There are three drives. Now the question becomes when the third drive comes out, and these are both one terabyte drives we've tested. And yes, smaller drives are slower, larger drives are faster. It's all about the chips and the density and writing to multiple chips at the same time. So the larger the drive, typically the faster they run. So I'm curious about the Sabrent. Now we probably won't get a chance to test one. I doubt Sabrent's going to send us one unless somebody else does. Uh, but I will say I had another uh, one of you guys, one of our subscribers contact me and asked me to build them a TRX40 system because they couldn't find anybody else that would build it with the motherboard the way they wanted, which happened to be the Gigabyte Designator TRX40. And I said, absolutely. So I believe it was Vincent. So we're going to be talking about that, and we might get a chance to test that Sabrent drive on Vincent's machine if he chooses to use that drive. I'll keep you guys posted. So we're running through the reads. We'll get to the writes. And right now, 7,070. Now, first question. An NVMe drive, that's as fast as fast can get. If you're PCI Express 3, you're looking at 3,500 megabits. If you're PCI Express 4, you're looking at 7,000. If you want to put one of these in your system for PCI Express 3, more power to you. Yes, you can do that. You will not achieve the speeds. You can only achieve what the slowest chain in that link would be, which is PCI Express 3.0. If you want these speeds, you've got to have PCI Express 4, which means a motherboard that supports it, which means a chipset that can handle that. X570 can do it. TRX40 Designare or specifically the TRX40 chipset. We just happen to be using the Gigabyte TRX40 Designare motherboard. And the next system we build, I will say this as well, because a question came up, what's the difference in the two motherboards, revision one or revision two? I would expect if we build this machine for Vincent, we will get a chance to take a look at a second revision motherboard. And hopefully, by examination, we will be very thorough and we'll be able to tell you what the difference is. Because right now I have no clue. 
So the read speed is 7070. The write speed is 5241. Uh, we got a better read than the write, which is acceptable. But uh, I just have stuck in my head the 6700. Now, I don't remember what the second set of numbers are. Just the first number stuck in my head. That's what I'm sharing with you. So when we get through this, after we've done all the connectors that we are going to test so that we can run through these one, two, three, four, then I will go through this again and we'll have a reiteration of what I've just said. But right now you're getting my first impressions and uh, I'm stoked. So first connection has the boot drive. Second connection has the Western Digital Black. And somebody else had asked which drive should be the fastest. I said, well, that depends. Your boot drive does not have to be the fastest but it depends on how you're setting your machine up. In other words, if you're setting up your machine for video editing, I would set that second drive, whether you want to call it a scratch drive or a working drive, to be the fastest drive. Or if you're doing virtual instruments, then I would prioritize and make that the fastest drive. And then let your rendering drive be secondary. Folks, I got to tell you, as long as you're rendering 1080 video, you will not saturate the bus on a spinning drive. However, if you go to 4K, that's a different game. If you go to 12K, that's a whole new ball game. And for those of you that want to look at some 12K footage, download the information about the codec with Blackmagic. I'll put up a link to it in the description of the video. And if I forget, somebody please remind me. You can download that video and you can see how that stuff runs on your machine. And you can see what you can get when you render what happens. And that's one of the reasons for having one of these NVMe quad cards. So that you can take four drives of whatever capacity, put them together, and get the faster speed. Okay, test complete. So again, 7,070 megabytes on the read, 5,241 megabytes on the write. That's pretty amazing. Now I'm going to see what we do on the chipset, and then we'll see what we do on the quad card. And based on that number and the comparison with the Samsung, um, I'm wondering what gives. Oh, and one question I didn't get to about will these drives slow down? Absolutely. Okay, so the question becomes, how much space can you expect to use on one of these drives? 75%. That other 25% don't try to use it. What the drive will do as you fill it up, it'll slow to a crawl, trying to save itself to uh, maintain integrity of the drive. Uh, how do you get that speed back? Well, you got two options. Wipe the drive and reformat it, or uh, don't get past 75%. Little tidbit of information. So if you've got a one terabyte drive, 750 megabytes. And you can do the math. So now I'm going to shut everything down, change the connectors, and we'll go to the uh, next part, which will be the next connector on the motherboard. So stay with us. We got a good overhead shot. So I think we're now ready for the next step. Uh, what we're going to do is put this in the uh, Aorus AIC adapter, which we generically call a quad card. This is a retail box. I don't want to mess up the one that we had been using because it's configured with drives. I'm going to use a new and long story. Long story short, we have this in the retail box we're going to test with. We'll put that one drive on the four different connectors and see how this works. Now, I've got to get this out of the box. We'll get it set up, get it installed, see how this works. So let's take a look overhead. This is the RS Generation 4 AIC adapter. We've already done a video about it. So this is kind of an adjunct. How's that? We're going to do the Western Digital Black SN850 on the Gigabyte Aorus Generation 4 AIC adapter. This is the retail box. Nice picture. Okay. We can take a look on the box. There should be a part number. And it's on the back. I'll, sh I'll show you what the label says. We've got a QR code here you can scan with your camera, but right here is what we need to see. Okay. Part number with a serial number. Check number. RS Generation 4. This is after Rev 1. So if anybody's curious, this is PCI Express 4.0. And this happens to be Rev 1. Why is that important? Well, of all the... Uh, as I refer to them generically, NVMe quad cards, implying four drives. Of all the NVMe quad cards, ASUS being the first, Gigabyte was a little slow coming out of the game. So uh, I'll do another video about all the adapters, but just suffice it to say that uh, ASUS has two, version 1, version 2 on PCI Express 3, and they have now a new one, uh, version 1 on PCI Express 4. We happen to have one of those. We're going to test it as we get to it, but this is all about the WD Black SN850. And as we've gone through the connectors on the motherboard from processor to chipset, now we're going to check this because this is tied also to the processor, but we're going to see if there's any difference, any variance 
because it's plugged into the PCI Express bus. I expect this to be a little slower, um, but I don't expect it to be as slow as going through the chipset was. So we're going to find out. But this way, um, well, let's get started. And as you can see, this is Rev 1. Shows the part. It's got a plastic film on the front. And anybody doing this, you're going to need a set of micro screwdrivers. You can also, uh, you're going to need a uh, number one Phillips. And you will probably need the uh, 4.5 millimeter socket if you start working with these on the motherboard for those double connectors. I sure wish they'd put these in anti-static bags like we used to have. And I've saved anti-static bags from the past. I'm glad I have because um, I never dreamed they wouldn't put stuff like this in one. Yeah, that'll work. Not as solid as I like, but it'll work. So first thing we have to do is flip it over. And we've got screws to get out. Six of them. And I will say while I'm at this, remember, each NVMe drive requires four PCI lanes. Hence, using one of these cards that requires 16 lanes. If you want to put one of these cards in a machine that does not have a 16 lane slot electrically, only mechanically, then it's going to have to have at least an 8 lane slot. And you can use a card that is self bifurcating. What does that mean? That means you take those 16 lanes and split it up so you've got 4, 4, 4, and 4. All four have to be addressed individually. A self bifurcating card can do that because it has a PLX chip on board that handles the lane processing, handles the switching. And it can take those four drives and make it use eight lanes. Okay. Anytime I repeat anything, it's for the, the purpose of uh, understanding and emphasizing a point. Because uh, as we do this, we want to learn. And I'm double checking myself to make sure I don't do something I'm not supposed to. You know, no matter how long you've been doing this, it's just a matter that you do this right every time. Because you don't want to mess anything up. I certainly don't. Okay, now we're doing our tests. And I want to keep the screen on that test while we're doing this so you guys can see what's going on. We've taken care of the BIOS, and uh, that stinks. Wow. I expected better, but I didn't expect that bad. I didn't expect as good as the 7000. But, um, well, that's been a theory that's held true since, uh, I don't know if y'all remember when we first went with... Uh, there was a CSA architecture that uh, Intel put on motherboards to give us uh, gigabit Ethernet. It's been a while. That CSA architecture was a way to bridge from PCI to PCI Express while we waited for PCI Express to get bandwidth. And um, the theory always being anything plugged into the bus was going to be slower. This proves it. So even though those cards go directly to the CPU, that performance is as if it were going through the chipset, which is uh, kind of uh, kind of a bummer. Based on that, on the first connector, I don't know if there's any point in testing the other four connectors, but I will. So 3728. So we've gone from uh, 6700 to over 7000 to this. Wow. Honestly, I expected something around 4,500. I really did. Uh, not this. But you have to remember, these are just I.O. cards. These are not RAID cards. RAID is a function of either the BIOS or RAID is a function of the operating system. If you want a true RAID, hardware RAID card, that's a different animal, a whole different price range. We may talk some more about that. One subscriber brought that question up. And I've kind of avoided it, but uh, when he did, we addressed it as his question came up. Most everybody wants to know how to put one of these quad cards in the machine. Not all machines can go. It has to be a high-end desktop. HEDT, which is X299, X399, TRX40. Those are high-end desktops. Not bad, not great. But I was in hopes this would be better. So that tells you. That still holds true. Just as they did with the CSA architecture, it still holds true now with PCI Express. So we're going straight to the CPU, but we're going through the bus. Um, there's, too much, uh, there's too much to go through to get there. 
Well, something else I didn't know, that there's a light on the back of this card that shows drive activity. So there's four lights, one for each drive. If I noticed that before, I don't remember it. So right now, our read is 3,728 megabytes, and our write is 3,469 megabytes. Pretty close. Comparable to the uh, two connectors on the motherboard that go through the chipset. So where you get your performance on one of these cards is not using them as individual drives. Where you get your performance is if you put in a RAID configuration. The hybrid RAID, which is from the BIOS, because it requires the BIOS, those are bootable. Those can also fail. The other RAID, which is just a tad bit slower that we've been through that I'm not going to get into again, is through the software, the operating system. I've never had one of those fail. So the best place to use one of these drives, is still my opinion, is if you're using something for databases, if you're using it for a scratch drive, wherever you want speed. And that's where you'll get your speed by taking the four and combining them. Another way to look at it, think of like the individual drives themselves are smaller, the larger the drives are bigger because you're writing more data to more drives. Well, you're kind of getting the same thing with RAID when you RAID for those drives on a car. Because you're combining them, you're able to get a faster speed. So if you take four of the, say, 500 gig drives to get one two terabyte partition, that's kind of the same thing that's going on. So those are our numbers, 3728 and 3469. I will go ahead now and uh, try the other connectors, but I don't think we're going to see much more of it. There's no point in showing you all y'all need to see are the results. So the next screen I'll put up will be just the one, two, three, four of how that works. But you've seen it live on the first connector. So, so what have we learned so far? The two primary connectors that are tied to the CPU are the fastest. The other two connectors that are tied to the chipset are a little bit slower. And we've now learned that the um, first connector on the RS quad card, which is on the PCI bus, which is tied directly to the CPU, is not as fast as I thought it would be, which is a real bummer. But it is what it is. So let's try the other connectors and see what we can find out. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. So power is off. Computer is off. Turn off the power supply. We have a light on the back. We still have power. So we need to drain it. We are drained. I will disconnect power. That's done. So I need to suit up. Got my gloves, got my strap. Power's disconnected. Ready for my Phillips number two. Let's pull the quad card out. Okay, something I'm going to share with you guys right quick that I've just discovered. We tried to test this on three different places. We didn't get to number four. When we went to number two, we did a test, and uh, I won't even tell you what it was. It was abysmal. We tried it on connector number three, and we didn't see the drive. So I have a theory based on if this card is set in an eight-lane slot, you would only see drive one and two. So when I had a drive in only one slot and I stepped up, because there was no drive in number one, it wouldn't initialize to see the other drives. So what I'm going to do is now take this Western Digital that we've tested on slot one. I'm going to put it in slot two. And what I'm going to put in slot one is this drive. We're going to take the Samsung 980 Pro and see if we can see both drives. So I wanted to share that little tidbit with you before we take the next step, because I find it quite remarkable that we couldn't see only one drive on this card. I tried it bifurcated, 4x4x4x4, four by four by four by four, and also in auto mode. And uh, it just, uh, first slot, yes. Second slot, it saw it the first time, but I mean, we had like 25 megabytes, and it was like the test froze. And when I went to uh, try it again, nothing. And when I went to slot three, couldn't even see the drive. Brought it back to slot one, I can see the drive. So I have a theory there has to be a drive in slot one before you go up any higher. And I have a concern, you're probably going to have to keep them consecutive, which means one, two, and then three and four. One and two for an eight-lane slot, and of course three and four. In other words, you've got to have the drives in there. You can't just test with one drive and four slots. So we're going to put this in and see what happens, and we'll get back to you. So we have the two drives set. The first drive, of course, will be the Samsung 980 Pro, and the second drive will be the WD Black SN850. So if you were, again, if, to reiterate, an eight-lane slot, one and two and a 16 lane slot, three and four. So we're gonna see now with two drives in if we can test this thing and see what happens. And I'm gonna keep the camera running just in case I come across something I find that I think is of interest to you guys that I can comment about as I see it. But I don't know that it will be a part of the video that you're gonna watch. And since we have the two drives that are in question, which are both second generation PCI Express 4, we'll go ahead and do a test and compare the two. 
We've already had the Western Digital Black 850, SN 850, in the primary slot on this card. Now it's in the secondary slot. So while we're at it, we'll go ahead and run the test again on the Samsung and compare. Right now the BIOS is set for a bifurcated slot, bifurcated 4x4x4x4. And I noticed with the BIOS version we were using, going back and forth, that we had some issues with the system rebooting. It wouldn't reboot consecutively. We would have to power down, power back up to get it to reboot. So that uh, I found kind of odd and annoying, which will be something else we'll be looking for to check and test when we do the BIOS update. All of these idiosyncrasies. I think that got it. Okay, card goes back in the machine. Make sure the card's all the way in the slot. Change to our number two Phillips tip. Get the card secured in the slot. Secured. Everything's connected. Two drives on, one and two connector. We'll plug power back in. We'll turn the power supply on. We'll turn power on to the computer. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the BIOS and see how we see those two drives. I'm watching for the drive lights on the back of the card. And when I hear the post, they should pop those two lights when they're looking at those drives. That should indicate and show that there's activity. I'm not going to put a camera on it just for that, but I'll tell you about it if I see it. And as soon as I hear post, we'll go into the BIOS. As much as I have tested and worked with these NVMe drives, and especially with these NVMe quad cards, I've never tried to put just one drive on a card. I find this behavior with this quad card quite curious and uh, kind of odd. Okay, post. Heard the beep. Now we're going to go into the BIOS. And once we get into the BIOS, I'll show you the screen. I'm going to show you the screen both ways, both with the uh, simplified version and the complete version, because there's, there's different pieces of information you get both ways. Now I'm into the BIOS. Okay, that's a little bit disconcerting. Now this is the uh, complete BIOS. I'll go to easy mode in just a second. What I'm going to do, well, let's do easy mode. Press F2. And if you'll notice here in the center of the screen, I've got SATA, PCI, and M.2. Now, the drives on the motherboard would be M.2. SATA would be any SATA drives. PCI would be the card we're looking at. And it sees the card, PCI Express by 16 underscore 2, PCI Express 4.0 by 4 at 4.0 by 4. So that's good. So now I'm going to control F2 to go back to the advanced mode. We'll tab over to settings. I'm going to go down to I.O. ports. And I have the card I'll scroll down to. And it's bifurcated at 4x4x4x4. Four by four by four by four. So I want to leave it in that mode. But what I'm going to do now is go over to boot and see if we see all the drives. And we see the Seagate Fire Coot of the boot drive. We see the Blu-ray. We see a spinning drive. There's the Samsung 980 Pro. And there's the Western Digital. So we see all five of the drives. That's what I wanted to find out. So now let's see if we can go to F10 and reboot the computer and save configuration. So, so far that's working and my theory is there has to be a drive in the first connector or else the rest of the card doesn't enumerate correctly. Now I don't know if it's specific to the card or if it's specific to this BIOS the way it sees the card. I don't know that yet. But that's my theory. And if this boots up, we'll go into the operating system and we'll uh, see what we've got. I may have to set the card in auto mode. Um, that's curious. I think that's got something to do with the way the card is seen with only two drives with the BIOS. Because I've had the other card in here with four drives, and I set it to manual mode to make sure we didn't have any issues with bifurcation. Booted right up. So this is curious. I heard it post. I see the BIOS screen, or I see the uh, boot screen. Let's see if we see Windows this time. Yep, this time it's going to boot. So that's, uh, I think that's got something to do with the BIOS, but I don't know it for a fact. I think all this stuff matters, so I'm, I'm glad I'm finding this stuff out for you guys to tell you some of the things you can expect. And like when Vincent builds his machine, that's part of what I'll do, is I will build a machine, I will test it, configure it, and if there's any quirks or idiosyncrasies, I will be able to document and help him and show him how to resolve them. So I'm kind of excited about getting to build another machine. Okay, we're in Windows. Let's go see what we've got. Let's go to Control Panel, double check our drives before we try to run any tests. Administrative tools, computer management, disk management, and uh, that's interesting. It wants to initialize one of the disks. Now, why would that be the case? That drive has been in a machine, has been used before, and has been tested. So let's see which one it's trying to initialize. So I'm going to cancel this for the second, for just a second, and see which drive we see. That says one terabyte D drive instruments. Okay, the instrument drive is... Yeah, the instrument drive is in a holder. 
The instrument drive is in its holder right here, the four terabyte. So it's curious now, it's picking up a label that says instrument drive, that's why I wanted to look, or else I'd be going back and forth. So my instruments are still safe. That's why I pull that drive out. So I don't know which drive it's seeing. I could, I could guess and I could theorize, but I don't, I'm not real sure. There's another way we can look and see. Now this particular drive, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it matters to the extent that uh, I would like to know which drive I'm messing with. So let's try the, uh, there's the Samsung 980 Pro. Let's try the Samsung 980 Pro and see if we can get properties on it. So the Samsung 980 Pro, let's populate. Okay, here's what we needed to know. The Samsung 980 Pro is being seen as a one terabyte instrument drive. The other drive says it hadn't been initialized for whatever reason. Uh, that's curious because we just tested it. So we will double check. There's our boot drive, the Seagate. I think this is the SN850. Let's double check. Volume, populate, not initialized. So it's not going to tell me anything. But the Samsung 980 Pro will populate and give me the label. So that's, that's really interesting. So the drive I would be initializing would be the drive I just tested earlier. Now to double check, this Western Digital Drive should come up as we populate, yeah, internal data drive. So by uh, process of elimination, that drive is the last drive in the sequence. And it shows, if I check the properties of it, not applicable, not initialized, which we did earlier. So I'm, I'm a little bit confused and I find that quite curious. But I'm okay with that. There's nothing on the drive. So I'm going to go back to this drive that's unknown, which is the uh, disk 3 that says uninitialized, un uninitialized, we'll initialize it. Disk number three. We're going to set it for GPT. We're going to say, okay, a device which does not exist was specified. Um, that's curious. It's very curious. So if I close that down and call that back up, what would it do? Would it try to initialize again? Let's try it. GPT, a device which does not exist. That's kind of what I had a while ago, trying to try that on the other connectors. So what I'm going to do is we'll power this down and reverse the drives. And uh, there may be something going on with a card that I'm not aware of. Press the power. Let windows shut down. We're going to pull the card and reverse the drives and see what happens. It'll tell us if there's something strange with the connector or something strange with the drive. We'll run connectors one and two, so I don't know what's going on. Okay, machine's down. Turn the power off. Power's off. We'll hit the power button again on the computer. Drain the power. And I'll pull the cable. And we will uh, pull the card. So power's disconnected. Pull the card, swap the two drives. Could have a bad card for all I know. This is why it's so important when you get components to be sure and test them immediately because you just, you never know. Stuff happens. Things go bad. Or things are bad and you don't know it. And if you wait, it's kind of hard to uh, say, hey, vendor. Vendor says, manufacturer. And the manufacturer says, what? So I'm just saying. So we'll swap the drives, and we can remember that 980 Pro is seen as an instrument drive. That's the label that's on it, although there's nothing there. And this drive has been formatted, so I'm curious to see what happens and how it's going to be seen now when we put these back down, because I think there's something odd with the connector. Now, the switches are only relevant if we were installing three of these cards in a machine. And the only way you're going to put three of those cards in a machine is if you have something with PLX chips. So that's kind of a future-proof thing for PCI Express 4 because, um, you know, you think about it. You got one 16-lane slot and two 8-lane slots. So you'd be hard-pressed to put even two of these cards in a machine. You got to have video. Unless you put your video in an 8-lane slot card, and that's just no. So anyway. Okay, we got the drives reversed. This is the primary. This is the secondary. Uh, Western Digital uh, SN850 Black being primary with the... Uh, Samsung 980 Pro being secondary. And I'm curious now to see with two drives in here how we'll see the second drive, that being the one that had the label. So we're going to find out. So let's put our sandwich back together. And yes, I'll go back into the BIOS and verify that everything is seen correctly by the BIOS before I go to the operating system. Because if the BIOS can't see it, there's no way the operating system will see it. No matter what the outcome, so far we know what the drive tests out. And, but this has gone beyond just testing the Western Digital Black SN850. This is kind of a secondary test to figure out what's going on with the RS with only two drives on the card. We tried it with one drive and it didn't like it. 
So now we've tried it with two drives and it didn't like it. So we swapped the drives. We'll see how they're seen. Based on what we've already seen with the two drives in there, I expect there's something going on with that second connector and we're not going to see that second drive. In other words, the one that had the label on it for instruments, we're not going to see that drive this time. Now, why is that happening? I have no idea. My guess is either the BIOS with the way it sees the card or it's something with the card. And since we had another card in the machine working with four drives on it, my guess it's got something to do with the BIOS. So right now we have the card bifurcated 4x4x4x4. What we might do is go into the BIOS and set it back to auto and see if that makes a difference. And one other option we might try is to stick it in the second eight lane slot and see what happens. Okay, screws are in. We'll put the card back in. Two drives, all we did was swap them. And based on what it did last time, I think that's what we need to do is go into the BIOS. We'll see if it posts. Because last time I had to hit the power supply or I had to turn it off and turn it back on to get it to boot up. And some of this will go through all over. Okay, I heard the post. We'll see how we see the drives. I expect the same to apply. We're going to only see one drive. We'll see one drive on the primary connector. We're not going to see the secondary drive. So we're testing drive letter G, which happens to be the Samsung 980 Pro. And uh, not as good as I'd like, but not as bad as it was the first time I tested. Do you have to remember now, this is on the secondary connector on the RS Quad card. So we're 3,728 megabytes. I'll leave it on that so we can watch the test. So what I think we can gather from this, or garner from this test, is uh, something I didn't know. If you're going to use one of these cards, there has to be a drive on that first connector. You cannot put a drive on the other connectors and expect them to initialize or work without it, which I find quite curious. So with the primary connector housing the Samsung 980 Pro, and with the secondary connector, which happens to be drive G that we're testing, that has the Western Digital Black SN850. So after we've tested this drive, which is the Western Digital Black SN850, which tested wonderfully on the motherboard through the processor, is not testing so hot going to the quad card. So 3,728 megabytes in the read and 3,431 megabytes in the write. PCI Express 4.0 Generation 2. So that just goes to show that anything that's hardwired to the motherboard is going to have better throughput, which is what we learned with CSA. The CSA architecture that uh, Intel put on motherboards when we went from PCI to PCI Express, that's been a wall. And that CSA architecture was to give us gigabit internet on PCI, which couldn't happen through an I.O. card, hardwired to the motherboard. Okay, I think we've got our test now. It's not quite finished, but almost. Informal test. These are the results. 3,728 megabytes on the read, 3,431 megabytes on the write. We'll see if any numbers change when it quits. Okay, it's finished. That's the Samsung 980. Now for grins, I'll do a print screen. Let's test the other drive. Remembering 3728 and 3431. So let's test drive D, which happens to be on the primary connector on the RS card. And this will be the Samsung. Samsung 980 Pro. Wow. I am really confused. The Western Digital Black SN850 prefers a connection directly on the motherboard. I'm going to go back and test that again. So what I gather from this is if you're putting it on the motherboard, get the Western Digital Black SN850. If you're going to put it on the RS card, and now I see drive light number two shining. Well, that's weird. That should be drive light number one. Anyway, it looks like if you're going to do the uh, Western Digital Black on the motherboard, that's the way to go. If you're on the RS card, get the Samsung. I wouldn't believe that if I hadn't seen it. Now, that's a more respectable number. That's a more consistent performance. So I don't know what's going on and what the difference is with the Western Digital versus the uh, Samsung. The Samsung on the motherboard tested out at 6700. On this card, it's getting 6670. That's respectable. And that's kind of what I had hoped that we would see on the Western Digital Black that we didn't get. The Western Digital Black, however, tested out best on the motherboard, and we got 7070. That's one of those things that leaves me scratching my head. Now, your results may vary. If somebody else wants to test this, I would love to hear their results.
but I find that simply amazing. And you have to wonder, would this score change or improve any if we change the BIOS? I have no idea. But we're going to do the BIOS update and uh, go from there. Now the 4956, I was in hopes for around 4,500 to 5,000 with the uh, Western Digital on here. Curious. Well, we'll let the test finish. I think the numbers pretty much speak for themselves. We could sit here and run these tests all day long until the cows come home. But at some point, you got to cut and go. It's like the more we learn, the more we realize how little we know. And uh, the more we need to know. But I want to thank Lee and the rest of you guys for coming up with these questions. Because once you get one of these in your head, you can't get it out until you find the results for it. So that's kind of where this is at. Two places on the motherboard. Two connectors to the CPU, two connectors to the chipset. And now we've tested the third place, the tertiary place, which is two connectors on the quad card, one and two. I'm not going to test the other two connectors on the quad card. Because based on my experience, if I move the second drive to the third or fourth position, I'm not sure, I'm not sure it's going to work. Okay, we got our numbers. Nothing changed. 6,670 for the read and 4,956 for the write. And it's on the Samsung 980 Pro. Kind of blows my mind. Okay, I'm going to go back and double check those letters on those drives. So we'll do a print screen on that. We'll zoom out. And I'm going to go back to the... That was D and G. So let's go check the drives again in control panel and enumerate those devices again. So we'll go to computer management, disk management, and let's look at the new volume, properties, alt tab, alt tab, the Samsung 980 Pro, we'll do properties, volumes, populate, yep, in the D drive, that's it. So we will cancel that, let's look at the last drive, which is new volume G, properties, Volumes, populate, and that's the new volume. So that's what we tested, and that's what we know, and that's what I wanted to uh, verify. I'll go through that one more time. Samsung 980 Pro, one terabyte. Properties, volumes, populate. So that label on that drive is D drive, one terabyte instruments. That's correct, GPT. So let's look at the other drive, which should be the G drive, new volume. Properties, volumes, Populate, new volume. And that is the WD Black SN 850. That's what I wanted to verify. Okay, so drive letter G. And I'm going to look at drive letter G one more time. Now what's curious, drive letter G, which should be the second drive, LED number one lights up. And that's actually the second drive, but it's the first LED. I don't get that. And I sure don't like the performance on that drive. So what I'm going to do is take that drive, pull it, put it back on the motherboard, and double check it. So whatever magic is going on, I don't know why that drive doesn't like that card. I wouldn't have believed that if I hadn't seen it. And I've always said, you know, when someone asks, which drive should I use on one of these cards, I've always said get the one that's the fastest for the best price. Well, unless you've tested the drive, you don't know which drive is going to be the fastest on the card. We do now. Two second generation drives. And I'm still trying to, uh, I'm doing this and I'm trying to digest what, I, what I'm seeing. So no point in going on to connector 3 and 4 on here, but what I'm going to do is go back to the connector on the motherboard since it's still available and do that one last test. Just to double check the drive, see if we still get 7070 on it. Now all the stuff you're seeing, I'm going to try to condense this because I've shot this in about five segments where I turned everything off, the cameras including, while I changed stuff out and went through stuff. But I like for you all to see the process and understand what's going on. It's just you don't see everything in the process. Because this, this video sequence that you're going to see, I hope, is going to get condensed down to about 30 minutes. But on the clock on the recorder, i got four hours here just of recording video. That doesn't include the time not recorded. What an amazing, what an amazing result. And I had to go double check to make sure the G drive is the... Um, correct drive which is the SN850 which is in the second connector but based on the LEDs LED number one is the one that's blinking so go figure I can't explain that 
That should be LED number two blinking. Now looking at those two uh, Gigabyte quad cards, one came with a motherboard. That's the one we've used the most. It's configured and ready to go. This one we're testing was the retail box. They both have the same version one on them. And they both had the same part number on them. PCB version one, revision one. So, okay, test is complete. 3,729 megabytes on the read, 3,430 megabytes on the write. That's drive letter G, which is the second connector on the RS quad card for the Western Digital Black SN850. Now that we've done that, uh, I think one more, one more we need to check. There's no point in checking the other two connectors on the card. I've got my doubts whether it would work or not, but I think more importantly, I need to pull that Western Digital Drive, put it back on the motherboard, test it one more time, just to make sure everything is, uh, you know, copacetic. That's just the strangest thing I've ever seen in my life. You know, about the time you think you got this all figured out, it changes. Okay, power down, power supply is off, hit the power switch to drain it, pull the power cable, and now we are going to uh, go overhead and uh, pull the card out again. And while we are at it, we have to pull the Thunderbolt card so we can get to that connector. Alrighty, we'll need our work surface, card comes out, screws come out and we'll pull both drives out. What we will do, and I will let you know this now, is we will update the BIOS, and we will do that in a video as configured so you guys can see the update. Because from what we've been told, what we've read, I believe it was uh, Rick that said on the uh, Gigabyte forums that that BIOS is good to go. We just haven't had a chance to apply it. So we'll get that new BIOS in, and we might revisit some of this. If we get any new results, we will update you on that. If we do not, we won't. But you will see the BIOS update because you need to know about how to do the BIOS update and when to update both BIOSes and when not to. And when you're working with a beta BIOS, you don't want to update both BIOSes. You only want to update the primary, just in case. So you got to fall back. One of our subscribers in South America had a problem with a BIOS update and uh, man, I feel for him and what he's gone through in Colombia. And he was not able to get the board back up and running, so he had to do an RMA. And an RMA from Colombia to the U.S. to, to get that squared away was, it's been a hassle for him. So I, I hope he's getting that squared away. But I really, I really hate to hear stuff like that happen. So Gigabyte was the one that told him he had a corrupted BIOS. We went through the sequences and how to do all that, and none of it worked. And I was uh, shocked. You know, from what we've learned from this, I've been wondering what's the best way to test for that uh, second slot, considering the problems we had with the Thunderbolt card in that second eight-lane slot. And based on lane assignments and the way that has to work out, uh, from what I can tell is that um, quad card would be a great way to test. Because if the quad card goes in that second eight-lane slot, and if it sees two drives, that means we're getting all eight lanes, four and four, on that slot. That's the way to test that slot and then try the Thunderbolt card in it. But the BIOS update needs to occur first. So now we have a methodology to step through that with something that we can measurably see success with. And uh, the visual representation of those drives in the BIOS will tell us that they're recognized, which means they would be available to a, um, a Thunderbolt card because it only needs four lanes. Silver lining and everything. So anyway, we got the drive in. Drive is in, secured, heat sink is secured, Thunderbolt 3 is on, secured to the case, everything's hooked up, so we'll uh, connect the power supply, turn it on, and then we will turn on the computer, and let's go into the BIOS and see if we can see anything. And as soon as it posts, we'll go into the BIOS and see if we see that drive. Once I see that drive, we'll go to the operating system, I want to run the test again, and see if we get the same results we got the first time when we started all this. Wow, we've been round and round. Okay, here post, waiting for the screen. We post, I got BIOS screen. We're into the BIOS, let's go to that. Okay, we will go to settings, IO ports, and we are not using that right now, but I want to double check it. So what we need to do is go to boot, and we see the Seagate, we see the Blu-ray, we see the spinner inside the case, and boot option number four. There's that drive. Okay. One other thing we can test. Let's go to the simplified BIOS or what they call easy mode. We'll press F2 
and then right here where it says PCI. We don't need that this time. We need M.2, and we see both drives. So M.2 or M2M and M2Q, and those are the two that go to the CPU. So we've verified. We see our drives. Now let's go to the operating system, see how that spins out. Uh, this has got to be one of the strangest things I've ever seen. So when someone says who's got the fastest drive, it depends. Depends on what connector you're on. That'll make your head spin. And yes, I'll go back to disk management to double check and make sure how the drive is seen. Everything should be good, but I don't want to leave any stone unturned. I want to document this methodically. Because what you've seen, you know, you change one thing, changes everything. And this has been a real eye-opener for me. Okay, the operating system's up. So you all know the routine, control panel, administrative tools, computer management, and disk management. And that drive is seen as new volume, and it's now seen as drive letter G. So drive letter G, we're going to right click, properties. Let's zoom in on that. We'll do an alt tab over to hardware. Should be that drive. We'll do properties. We'll enumerate volume by going to populate, new volume G. So we're all on the same page, new volume G. So we can cancel all that out. So I'll zoom out, close everything down, escape, X out, X out, X out of all of that. So let's bring up Crystal Disk Mark and see if we get the same score of 7070. Drive letter G and let's test, see what we get. Will we still get 7070? Wow, we do. Um, that just, wow, I don't know what to say. I guess all I can do is say what I've already said for the third or fourth or umpteenth time. Which drive is the fastest? If you want a second generation drive, we've tested two of them. I would love to get my hands on the third one, but unless, uh, unless someone sends us one or Vincent decides to buy one, that's the only way we get to see that Sabrent 2 terabyte, which you should probably be able to purchase by the time you see this video. Western Digital Black on the motherboard to the CPU. On the NVMe quad card, especially the Aorus, it's got to be the Samsung. So again, we'll let this test finish, but I wanted to double check. I wanted to know if we had a fluke or something was going on that I wasn't aware of. Now things happen, and I'm not changing the screen while this is running, just in case. I'm kind of curious if we were on the primary connector on the motherboard, but uh, suffice it to say I'm satisfied with being on the secondary connector. Primary connector being the boot drive, secondary connector being the one where we had the instruments that I pulled, which is the secondary connector which is to the CPU. So you can see where the Western Digital Black will shine. So the question being, where do you want the fastest drive? It depends on where that drive performs the best at. Not all M.2 connectors are equal. Whether they be on CPU, or whether they be on chipset, or whether they be on I.O. card that is connected to the CPU. And that's a good example. The read on that's phenomenal. The write's pretty darn good too. And our recording now is at 4 hours and 14 minutes. And this was supposed to be one of those quick videos, not by any fault of the drive, just we went a little bit further in our testing. The more we learned, the more we realized, the more we needed to know. I will say at this point, what we've done with this, we should have done with the Samsung originally. We did not. We went on all four connectors on the motherboard. We didn't bother to test the Samsung on the I.O. card, but it stands to reason it's one of the connectors. Card comes with a motherboard, so when I test it, test is just about done. When it is, I'll do a screen capture, but I don't want to take the camera off of this, or excuse me, I don't want to take the input off of this. I'll switch to the camera when this is done, just in case anything changes. I don't expect it to. Okay, it's done. Screen capture, Windows flag, print screen. Okay, we're done. So I think that pretty much about sums it up. We've, uh, we've been able to do four things now with this test. We did an unboxing of the Western Digital Black SN850. We've done an install. And we figured out of the four connectors on the motherboard, which one is the fastest. We've also tested it on the uh, Gigabyte quad card, the RS quad card. We found out some interesting facts on two of those connectors. I didn't go to three and four. So we've done an unboxing, an install, a test, and we looked at the technology. And uh, didn't mean to have your head spinning, but if it is like mine, it is what it is. Which drives faster depends on the connector. So. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I want to thank you all for watching. I love everybody for uh, being a part of this for Builder Buy. And we are on to the next video. We're out. And I will say coming up in the next video, we're either going to do something about some more stuff on NVMe, but I'd really like to get the new video card installed. So I got some stuff I'll share with you about that, which is going to be uh, going from an RTX 2080 Ti 
to the RTX uh, 3080. It is what it is. So thanks for joining us. We'll see you in the next video. We're out. <laughs>